Yeah, Start now. Oh, Mr. Willis is here. 28.2. Page 828. That's pretty cool that it's chapter 28.2 and it's 828. I got that. It's pretty cool. I mean, whatever. 282828. It's unbelievable. Okay, yesterday we talked about some of the parts of a fish. We got the rest of that. Today, you're going to have to learn about the three major groups of fish. That's a lot to erase. You need a better eraser. We have the jawless fish. Jawless fish. Cartilaginous fish. Cartilaginous. And jaw fish. Fish with jaws. No. Bony fish. We talked about, I, I, I went too far yesterday, so I got into some of this. Um, the first fish were the jawless fish. They include the hagfish and the lamprey. And these jawless fish, they, they have no jaws, they cannot close their mouths. It used to be that there were thousands of species of these things. Most of them were filter feeders. They sucked in water through their mouth, the water came out the gill openings, and they strained food from the water. But now the only ones left are uh, the lamprey, which is actually a blood sucker. It connects to the body of another fish or a shark or something. It sucks its blood. And there's the mouth of a lamprey. Is the hagfish thing that shoots mucus? And blood? then the hagfish is this one. It's a, it, it eats dead stuff on the bottom of the ocean. And uh, it sprays out blood and mucus as a defense mechanism. Um, so it's pretty gross. That's why that lady's grossed out there. <coughs> And uh, again, the jawless fish eventually evolved jaws through the gill uh, arches becoming larger and more anterior. Do you know what the word anterior means? Forward is back. Forward. Posterior is back. Anterior is forward. And so this is a little video I didn't get to show you yesterday. I was trying to go quickly. I didn't realize we have two days for this. The earliest fossil vertebrates are 550 million years old. These were jawless fish, and for over 100 million years, they were the only vertebrates on Earth. There were many groups, but today only the lamprey and hagfish remain. These earliest vertebrates were filter feeders. Water entered their mouths and passed out through a number of paired gill openings. Suspended food was strained out of the water. Filter feeders are limited to eating small items of food. In all fish, successive gill openings are separated and supported by skeletal structures called gill arches. These arches are in a series like a row of V's on their sides with their openings toward the animal's mouth. Each arch has a hinge at the angle of the V. Jaws are thought to have evolved from an anterior gill arch. The first jawed fish appeared 430 million years ago. The two earliest classes are extinct, but they were succeeded by the cartilaginous and bony fish, which survive to the present. There are no fossils intermediate between jawless and jawed fish, but evidence from comparative anatomy and embryology supports the theory of jaw evolution from gill arches. Jaws offered the enormous advantage of new feeding modes as fish could open and close mouths with teeth on their edges. These descendants of early jawed vertebrates illustrate some of the variety of feeding modes. What that's saying is all vertebrates came from these <laughs> early jawed so everyone was like all like fish. Animals evolved from jawed fish. Correct. And we'll go through in the next weeks, I'll show you how that evolution occurred. It started with fish, and then it went amphibians, and then reptiles, and then birds and mammals. Now, so the jawless fish, the jawless fish actually had 
uh, a skeleton made of cartilage. But we don't call them cartilaginous fish. We call the, the, the fish that we call cartilaginous are fish with jaws that have cartilage skeletons. And that includes the sharks and rays. And hold on, I wanted to bring this in. I'll pass this around so you can look at it. I want you to be careful with it. It's a uh, shark jaw. And when you look at this, you might say, Mr. Willis, you said these are cartilaginous fish. That jaw looks like bone. Are you getting any of this stuff? Oh, yeah. Um, well, uh, actually, they call the jaw of a shark calcified cartilage, which is like bone. It's kind of the first step toward bone. Excuse me. And I don't know if you knew, but uh, every bone in your body was once cartilage. Bone is formed from cartilage. And when you were just a fetus in the uh, womb of your mother, all your bones were cartilage. And they kind of harden and become bone as you grow in your mother's tummy. And by the time you're born, most of your body is, most of your bones are bone, not cartilage. But some of them are still cartilage, like the head of a baby still has cartilage in some places. And later, as you become an adult, it, it continues to harden into bone. So cartilage and bone are really closely related. You may have heard of the soft spot on a baby's skull. That's cartilage, not bone. It has a, it's where two bones are come together, but they haven't grown into bone yet. Now, so let's talk about the cartilaginous fish here. They all have skeletons made of cartilage. The flexible skeleton, rows of sharp teeth, the streamlight body, placoid scales. Make sharks one of the top predators in the sea. Do we need to see that jaw? Yeah, I'm going to pass it around. The uh, uh, shark has scales that are shaped kind of like teeth all over its body. You may have heard that if you rub a shark backwards, it's sharp. Yeah. And that's because imagine teeth like, like shark's teeth all over the body of a shark. Only the ones in the mouth are a lot sharper than the ones on the body. But the ones on the body are still somewhat sharp. And if you rub a shark the wrong way, it would be very uh, uh, sharp, coarse, yes, on your hand. Those, the, the scale, the shark's teeth are just harder, larger, sharper scales. And you can see, if I'll pass this around, I want you to look at the teeth, how they're in rows. The teeth will fall out, and a new teeth will come up to replace the old one. And it's just like scales do. If you knock a scale off a shark, a new one from behind it comes up to take its place. And you can really see this if you look at the teeth. Y'all be careful with this, okay? Don't be uh, throwing it around because it will break. <laughs> Um, skates and rays have flattened bodies adapted to living on the ocean floor. I'll show you them too. Here's the body of a shark. There's its gill slits. It takes. It still takes water in the mouth. What's that question? Yes. How many rows? It depends on the shark, but it could have up to twenty. Watch that thing when I pass it around. Look at all the rows of teeth. Um, you can see it's got all of its different types of fins, very good swimmers, grow very large, very successful, these sharks. Video footage. Most sharks are nocturnal, and 
This reef is patrolled by hundreds of white tip reef sharks. Search the reef, alert to the smallest movement or faintest odor of prey. Parrotfish often sleep inside a mucus cocoon, which may help hold in any odors they may produce. Creole fish wedge themselves into the coral and hold still as predators pass. Sleeping fish remain undiscovered by the hunters, but occasionally the shark's acute senses prevail and death comes suddenly. In this way, sharks cull fish populations for individuals who have grown old and weak or are injured. cover 70% of the Earth's surface and hold more than 20,000 species of fish. Of these, some 370 species are sharks. Long before dinosaurs existed, sharks roamed the waters. They first originated more than 400 million years ago and have changed very little in the last 100 million years. Today, few other species on Earth inspire so much respect and fear. These amazing predators sit at the top of the marine food chain. By weeding out the weak and injured, they help maintain a balanced ecosystem. Sharks are highly tuned hunting machines that rely on their specialized senses to catch prey. Using their sharp sense of hearing, they can detect sound vibrations up to 3,000 feet away. They are especially sensitive to the low frequency pulses from struggling prey. The vibrations from this speaker sound like a wounded fish and send these sharks into a frenzy. As a shark gets closer to the catch, its sense of smell takes over. It can detect a single drop of blood in 25 gallons of water. Water flows through nostrils on the underside of its snout, giving the shark a steady stream of olfactory information. Near the snout, sharks also have tiny jelly-filled pores. They pick up electrical signals created when animals move. It's like an extra sense that helps sharks find prey, even when it's hiding in the sand. When we think of sharks, we can't help but think of their teeth. Sharks use and lose their teeth all the time. Some species shed as many as 30,000 during their lifetime, but replacements are always nearby. Rows of teeth make it possible for a new tooth to rotate in when needed.
Besides their reputation, one thing that distinguishes sharks from other fish is their skeleton. It's made of tough, flexible cartilage instead of bone. Cartilage is lighter than bone, so the shark uses less energy as it swims than a bony fish does. Tough skin covers its streamlined body. Tiny teeth-like structures make the skin as rough as sandpaper and protect the shark from injury. These teeth point backward to reduce the drag of the water as the shark races through it. So many advantages make sharks one of the most efficient predators on Earth. Many of them are designed to attack, but not all of them do. In fact, most sharks are harmless to humans. We still have a lot to learn about these mysterious and misunderstood creatures. Scientists continue to unravel their secrets. They showed a whale shark there. They have those at the Atlanta Aquarium. So they, uh, they, uh, they're filter feeders. I was that when, like, when a shark like, bites a human, what yeah, set of teeth are they using? Yeah. What, what? When the shark bites a human, what set of teeth are they using? What set of teeth? Yeah. Yeah. They're always using the, the ones in the front. You see how shark oh, okay. There's a couple of sets of teeth that yeah, yeah. stick yeah. in. Yeah. Other questions? So, I just have to, that was the first like year you ever came to the yeah, I don't know. It's a long bit of evolution. For some reason, it does well with the eyes further out. I'm not sure why. Yeah. Um, I think Hogan maybe was telling me about there, there are great white sharks in Jacksonville. Yeah. yeah um, there's, like two of them. there's shark breeding grounds all around here. It's a good place for them. Lots yeah, of the, the marshes are where a lot of baby yeah, fish and stuff are born. So near the marshes, you'll find sharks eating them. Um, and uh, so, yeah, we have a kind of the marshes, kind of the bottom of the food chain. So we've got a lot of them around here. Um, I've heard on TV that the sandbars, like by the sandbars, they're, they're like the hunting grounds for the sharks. Sure, yeah. Because in the sandbars, it's very shallow, especially when the tide goes out. You're left with shallow water that's, fish don't have, very many places to go to hide. So it's a good place for hunters to come in and eat. So you got little sharks running around all through these sandbars catching fish that can't get away. Usually they don't attack people. We've, although we have lots of sharks around here, there's very few attacks. Yes? A couple of years ago, there, uh, there was like a sandbar out on the beach over there, and me, Taylor, and Bennett were in the water, and a shark swam through me and Taylor's legs. Yeah, and they left me on the Yeah, we left them on the sandbar. If you go like fishing, go, go out there and watch the guys fish, and they catch them all the time. Yeah, fishing. We're all like freaking out. Yeah, yeah. 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 he was. Yeah, it was now, the cartilage bodies, listen. The cartilage bodies of the rays and skates, rays and skates are flat cartilage fish. And uh, it allows them to kind of sink down and, and they put mud over their bodies and they're very good at hiding in the sand. It's a big filter. Like a magic carpet, a ten foot manta ray skims over the sand. Flaps on either side of her head herd plankton into her enormous mouth. And graceful acrobatics allow her to pass repeatedly through heavy concentrations of plankton as she harvests the sea of tiny prey.
was uh, talking fishing down in the Keys one time, and a, like a six foot eagle ray jumped out of the water and like, so, yeah, it was like the coolest thing. Really? Like, right in front of our boat, just Perfect. jumped up and like it looked like it just stood still in the air. Perfect. They got these big manta rays down. If you've ever been to the uh, the uh, casino, this huge hotel and casino in uh, it's called the Atlantis in the Bahamas, they got a big aquarium with a manta ray swimming around in it. Yes. Okay. So yes. What's up? Um. How come in for like sharks and like rays and stuff? How come smaller fish stay on? Uh, they're just eating little parasites and stuff that are on the body. No, they need them to help clean them off. Okay. So listen up. The jawless fish are. Class, it's called Mixini, and again, that's hagfish and lampreys. And the cartilaginous fish are class chondrichthyes. And that's sharks and rays. Is that kingfish and lamprey? Hagfish oh, and lamprey. And then the bony fish are called osteichthyes. You got to know all these class names. Osteoporosis. Yeah, oste osteo means bone. So osteichthyes are the bony fish. Oh, can you say the cartilaginous name again? Chondrichthyes. Bony fish, osteichthyes, and almost all the fish that you think about goldfish and catfish and. Uh, Kingfish and marlin. marlin, they're all bony fish. And meaning their skeletons are like ours, they've hardened from cartilage to bone. Now, we divide the bony fish into two major groups the ray finned fish and uh, the lobe finned fish. Lobe -fin. The ray fin fish have hard, have fins that are thin with hard structures called rays going up into them. So if you draw a ray fin fish, you might draw its fin looking like this. And these little lines that you draw, those are the rays that go up into the very thin um, uh, fin. You might draw the one on the side like this, and there's my fish. Isn't that good? So these are ray fin fish. Now the lobe fin fish are different. The lobe fin fish have actual thick muscles and bones going into the fin. So the fin looks kind of like has uh, thick structures going into it. It looks kind of thick and kind of like an arm or a leg. Those are your lobe fin fish. And you may have never seen a lobe fin fish before. I got some pictures of them here. This is a ray fin fish. And there we see the, the ray fins. They don't have any, any uh, muscle or bone going into them. Not fish is that. Never mind. Soldier fish. So the, the ray fins are like the fin. Uh, these are ever, all of these fins are ray fins. Oh, yeah. All of them are ray fins. But you can see the difference between that and a lobe fin fish. Here's a lobe fin fish called a coelacanth. And you can see, look at its fin, it's got this lot of structure going into it. It's got some rays coming off the end, but this part right here is bone and muscle. They're called lobed fins. I don't like 10 coelacanths left. Uh, no, there's a lot of coelacanths. There's like, uh, I think there's like eight species of lobe fin fish left. But coelacanths used to be thought to be extinct, but they're actually a bunch of them living down in Africa, off the coast of Africa. And these lobe fins, these, are the, these fish evolved into your amphibians, because these lobe fins are like arms and legs. They have muscle and bone going into them, and they're used by the fish to pull themselves around. And so we think that these lobe fins evolved into arms and legs and allowed amphibians to crawl up onto shore. Whoops. 
sorry, I just screwed this up. tetrapods 
The tetrapods mean four feet. Those are ones that walk on land, and those are your amphibians. And we'll talk about those in the next portion of this chapter. That's 28.3. Yeah, that's what I Okay? All right. So read 28.2 tonight, because we can on it tomorrow. And we finished video.